finally gets a tattoo. Another subject matter I have not done before. Oh man, that's hard. If you, like insects, insects are rough. They've got a lot of different bits and bobs on them. I don't do micro tattoos. Hello, my intellectually curious love bugs. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nancy. I am an entomologist, which means that I study bugs and I live in Ecuador where normally I do ecotourism. However, obviously that's not happening. So welcome to my YouTube channel. You should subscribe if you like anything about bugs because we do react videos about bugs and interview videos and just talk about random bug stuff here. So if that's interesting to you, be sure to subscribe. And you should definitely also like this video. Mm hmm Because if you don't, bad stuff will happen. Yep. So today we are going to be reacting to Ink Master. We are going to be reacting to some bug tattoos. I have recently fallen on this bandwagon of watching Ink Master because we all have guilty pleasures and I came across this episode where there is a flash challenge where from the looks of it they have to do insect tattoos. So we are going to be reacting to that. Of course I will be reacting to it on an entomological perspective and not on like a tattoo artist perspective because I am not a tattoo artist. Please don't ask me to tattoo you. That would be terrible for everybody. <laughs> Stick around for the word of the day, which is hamuli, and it's not at the end, it's somewhere in the middle. So you're gonna have to keep watching to figure out what hamuli are. <laughs> so, all right, let's get into it. This is Ink Master, they quit bugging me. Ink Master US season 10, episode 11 by Ink Master Central. So here we are. All right, let's get started. I'd just like to state that I like seeing these reality shows where people create things. I could definitely do with less of the drama and more of like the art or the creative process. But here we are, I'm watching it for free. I can't judge, I guess. For this flash challenge, once again, coaches, you will be tattooing. Remember. All right, coaches. This week, got. we're testing technical application. Technical application is pretty much how you put the ink into the skin. Today, I really like these little segments of Ink Master that they tell you like the very specific parts of tattooing and what they're looking for. I think that's particularly interesting because like skin is not paper, right? So <laughs> there's a lot of things that go into it. And so I like those little tidbits and kind of when they talk a little bit about the process and what, what's like important and stuff. You must create a micro realistic insect tattoo. Micro realistic insect. <laughs> In an area no bigger than two inches by two inches, it will take the application skills of a master to flawlessly apply every microscopic detail. All right. First of all, insects are complicated. They have hairs, they have divots, they have shiny spots, they have not shiny spots, they have black eyes that you need to differentiate from the head and lots of articulation and toes and claws. Like there's a lot to an insect. The other thing is like two inches by two inches is not very big, like that basically, which is basically the body of my beetle here. I don't know how well you can see him. It was like awkward to hold up to the camera. So he's about two inches, just the body. And when this was my first tattoo, I got it like two years ago. And I remember when I first went, I was like, oh, I want all these details. I want the stars for this reason. And this beetle is important for this. So I want the antennae to look right. And I want like the beetle shape to look right. All of these different things. And I want it this big. <laughs> and my tattoo artist was really awesome. And this is why you should definitely listen to your tattoo artist. And they were like, yeah, if you try and shove all that detail in there, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. It'll just get really muddy really quickly. You won't be able to see what's going on. I recommend making it bigger, like go big or go home. So I was like, okay, sure. You know what you're talking about. And so it ended up this big. My friend Joni, if she's really nice, she'll let me borrow a picture of her tattoo as well up here, hopefully on screen. But she wanted a scientific illustration and she also wanted hers really, really small, but she was getting a parasitic wasp, which has a ton of details in it body segments, wing venation, eyes, ocelli, antennae, all of these different things, right? She also got hers the size of her forearm because it's really hard to smash that amount of detail into a little itty bitty living space. Phenomenal cosmic powers. Itty bitty living space. The smaller something gets, the harder it is to tattoo. Technical application with the insect means every single hair, every single wing, everything has to be perfect. 
This kid knows what he's talking about. I think if I remember when I was watching like the beginning of this season, he actually had an interest in insects and beetles specifically. So this kid knows what he's talking about. The aspect of, yeah, insects are complicated and have a lot of, a lot of different parts in them. Let's meet your canvases. So here's where they tell us like what the people actually want. Canvases, please tell us what insect you're looking to get today. I would like to get a bee. Ooh, I want a beetle. Standard. I like that. Yeah, beetles. I want a praying mantis. Nice. I hope to God we don't get stuck with that praying mantis. It's such a big, long bug that there's no way to put that whole thing inside of the two-inch square. You might as well just put one line and call it a praying mantis. So what I would do if I was given that insect, because they are very long, like they're kind of a, a weird shape, and placement is really important when doing tattoos because you want something that makes sense for your body, and you want something that makes sense for like the shape of the animal or thing that you're putting on you. So what I would do in this case, two inch by two inch, I would do a portrait. I would not tattoo the whole insect. I would just take like a picture of the head and maybe the legs because the head is like mantises are like the only thing that have mantis heads. They're very easily recognizable. And also the legs are very easily recognizable. So if you just did like a little frame with like that claws, watchy forearms, raptorial forelegs, what they're actually called. <laughs> But yeah, that's what I would do. I would just do a portrait of the face, a really detailed face with the t -t 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 arms and, and a two inch square. And that's, that's how I would tackle that from an artist and entomologist perspective. You have two hours and your time starts now. We're testing technical application with these tiny micro tattoos. It Ooh, okay. Uh, it looks like he's doing a leaf beetle um, you can see a little bit of the red on top, and I got a flash of that blue abdomen. Looks like he's doing a type of leaf beetle, but I wonder if we can see a sketch, and so we can see what he, exactly what what exactly what beetle he's picking. It's all about intricate, small, perfect little details. This is what I do. I do a lot of mini stuff. I want to show like. Okay, yeah. So this is definitely a type of leaf beetle or chrysomelid. So the thing with chrysomelids, oh yeah, here we go. Um, is that. It's such a diverse family. There's like 30 some odd thousand species of chrysomelids and they look very different. As you can tell, you can see you have like this one that's kind of like elongated shaped. You have some like the potato beetles that are just kind of like round, <laughs> very round. Uh, you have some that look like ladybugs that aren't like such a such a diverse family. Um, but there's a couple things I can show you to, to help, to help let you know, like why I think it's a, a leaf beetle. So we were lucky enough to like kind of see the red head, um, and we can really clearly see over here the eye shape. So this may not be the exact species that he is doing, but it's, it's one of these little, these little elongated shiny leaf beetles. So you can tell it's a leaf beetle. One, by the eye. So a lot of people will look at this and be like, oh, these antennae are so long. It must be a serambicid or a longhorn beetle. So if you look at one, of, okay, so yeah, here's a good. The eye wraps all the way around the antennae. And that is a really good characteristic for identifying these guys. It's like, they look like they have little aviators. They literally just wrap around the entire the entire antennae and the antennae just looks like it's stuck in the middle of the eyeball. Whereas you can see these chrysomelids also have pretty long antennae, but they just have these like really characteristic round little eyeballs, like, like just really, really cute little round eyeballs. Super cute. The chrysomelids are adorable. A really hard family to ID if you're a beginner though, because again, they can all look so, so, so different. I usually identify chrysomelids by being like, does it have the characteristics of a longhorn beetle? No. Does it have the characteristics of a ladybug? No. Does it have the characteristics of a darkling beetle? No. I'm just going to be like, nope, 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 nope. It probably falls into the trash can family of chrysomelids. A cool shadow and yeah. make it look like you can pull that little bug off. With so the first thing I'm going to do is try to give you a praying mantis. It has to be like two inches. Like Everything has to be two inches, Damn. bro. Yeah, so I would have done something like this picture where you're not doing the whole insect. You could fit that in two inches. You have the characteristic legs. You have the characteristic head. And, like, it's, it's a very pretty pose. Yeah. Two yeah. inches might be too small for a brain man. It's pretty yeah. or big. To make it that small, right. yeah. you lose everything. It's a fly, man. <laughs> That's a fly. So they're just going to change it completely. Hilarious. Um, I see why they do these for the, like, change the ideas for for these particular shows. 
Right, you want to give the guy a good tattoo that you can do. So it makes sense. If you ever do go on these shows and get to just listen to the person who's about to tattoo you because they definitely want to do a good job and you want a good tattoo on you. Like, that's really cool. And, like, I'm down. I want you guys to win. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm, like, I don't really care, honestly. Oh, they got really a nice to guy, you too. You know what? Shh, shh. the fly? Yeah. Okay. All right, coach, you tell me today. Uh, that one looked like a musket fly really quick. I wonder if I got a better picture of it. It's coming up. Yeah, but that thing is small. I finally get the tattoo. Another subject matter I have not done before. Oh man, that's hard. If you, like insects, insects are rough. They've got a lot of different bits and bobs on them. I don't do micro tattoos. You can just do a light fade, really, really light. Just let it blend out. Like that? Okay. My wife has always told me, don't puff up and don't shrink. I just literally shaved all that with a single needle. Mm -hmm. One hour left. All right, so we get a little bit of the fly. It looks like a regular musket fly. Musket flies are the house flies. And house flies can look similar to a bunch of different families, most notably the sarcophagids, which are the flesh flies. So to identify muskets versus sarcophagids, you are counting hairs on this little, little tiny piece of the thorax called the maron. And when you are doing fly identification, the keys have a thing called a hair map where it's a picture of the thorax with dots and or hairs that are drawn out so you can see the exact placement of the hairs and exactly how many there are because that's what you're counting to get down and identifying these little families that all kind of basically look the same if you're if you're a newbie identifying insects stay away from flies not easy <laughs> it's more like a cool three quarter with a shadow under it i want a good shine in it it's awesome I think it'd be cool. Shh. Got huge contrast. Nice deep black. I think I would have done that beetle in color. I mean, I realize they only have two hours and I'm not a tattoo artist, but I think because that beetle is that really beautiful, shiny kind of blue midnight color, I feel like if you could have shown that, it, it would have like really stuck out really well. But again, two hours, tiny subject. I get it. Are you going to do more? With All right. There we go. Yes, it looks just like a regular house fly, although a lot of those details in there are starting to get lost. I mean, we're not done yet. So hopefully he'll, he, uh, <laughs> he cleans it up a little bit. So all insects have compound eyes, so you can see the individual, individual facets. But flies, it's really, really, really easy to see those individual facets. They're bright red, and they just stick out from a mile away. Yeah, so that's not the right family. But so even here, you know, you're kind of like up in here and you can see all those little dots on the fly eye. Each one of those is an individual lens. Flies can have up to like 4,000-ish lenses. With, with the eye here? Like more yeah, shading I'm on the eye? Yeah, I'm definitely going to do okay. more shading yeah, on the eye. More I just want to get the, the detail in first. You know? Uh, I know Steve can pull out a win. Good looking out. He's been the underdog, I think, when it comes to the coaches. You know, he's old school. He's been tattooing for a long time, but he's shown that he can beat them on any day. He needs black off the tip. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. No matter how hard Steve and Anthony work today, DJ is the king of micro-realism, and no one can touch that. So before we get to see all the uh, all the tattoos, I'm going to put it in your brain right now. You start thinking about which one is your favorite and why, and be sure to let me know in the comments below. I love it, dude. That is awesome. Yeah, that that is really nice. Um, just, just really quickly, I know they're going to show the images again in a second, but I'm really impressed that you can differentiate the eye on the bee head because it's a black eye on a black head, and the fact that you've got those highlights in there is really, really cool. Amazing, man. You got a lot of detail in there. Definitely switching you and DJ. Check out your bug. Well, oh, that's dope. So that image isn't as easy to see, so we'll wait until they pop it up on the screen and we can see it really nice. Hopefully we win this one. Because if we do, everybody's pop. Shh, shh. All right, brother, take a look, man. This is really cool. There's a lot of detail in there. All right, yeah, so that's a good shot. Uh, the eye isn't as punctuated with all those different lenses as I think it should be but overall yeah it looks nice I think the other two are 
better just from like my quick opinion and one of the things that's kind of weird on this one again well to critique it more when it gets thrown up on the screen for real is like what is going on with this back leg what is going on with that oh man <laughs> all right guys it is time to critique your work anthony let's start with you we set out to do a clean tattoo and we're able to deliver that the application in this tattoo is really smooth there's no redness there's no trauma everything's deliberate more than anything it looks like a believable insect the segments are really defined. It's tiny, but the details are big enough to stand clear. The drop shadow is really nice under the translucent wings. So you still get the effect of these wings being detailed, yet they give off this little bit of shadow, which you got perfectly. Thanks. Now I'm gonna talk about it. So you heard what they had to say. They talked a lot about the actual application, which is really cool. I definitely agree with a lot of things like the drop shadow, like the translucent shadow underneath the wings. That's so hard. I like to draw a decent amount and wings has always been something that I've struggled with because it's really hard to like get the idea that they're there, but they're also transparent. So especially in black and white on skin and a tattoo, I think that's really, really cool. Um, I like this little mane of fur around the honeybee and as you'll see a lot of honeybees often do have kind of a bald spot on them on like the back of their thorax sometimes it's more filled in sometimes it's more bald just depends and I like how when you get into the abdomen you definitely looks bee like just all the highlights on the legs and getting the articulation of the legs and the articulation of the antennae and the eyes is really really amazing it's hard to tell if this bee has one wing or two i'm guessing it has two like this kind of little bump here looks like it would be the second wing and our word of the day is hamuli and the reason why it often looks like bees only have one pair of wings instead of two pairs of wings which they really do um so this right here is the four wing and this little section down here is the hind wing, but they look like one wing because there's this thing called the hamuli, which is a line of hooks that connects the forewing and the hind wing together. This gives the insect a lot of stabilization when it's flying, it has a bigger wing surface area to like, you know, do the flapping. This is me being a bee and flapping. Sometimes when they're at rest and sitting, they do kind of like fold up under each other. Like you can tell here, this is where the, the fore wing is. And this is right down here where the hind wing is just coming up under it. And you can kind of see that in Anthony's drawing. You can definitely tell that it's honeybee wing venation and not something like a fly. And if you're going for a realism, especially you are one, going to want to get those very specific details in place. My biggest fear right now is DJ's Beetle didn't allow the opportunity to have some of the extra textures that Anthony was able to put in between the fur and the translucence of the wings. If DJ wanted to show off some of that stuff, he could have had a beetle in flight and you would have gotten those translucent wings. There's plenty of other beetles that have hair and fur all over them. And like, it could have been done. It could have been done with a beetle. You just couldn't have done it with a beetle at rest like this one is. I really like it, man. It's super tight, super clean. You went with a realistic take on this thing. It looks really slick. Okay. We can hear what the judges have to say. I will comment on it as an entomologist first this time. <laughs> So I really, really like how you can see on the elytra or on the shell, this part back here, you can really see all of the different textures where he laid the highlights. It really looks like those divots on the beetle shell. And if we come back and we look at this beetle, I mean, you can definitely see all of those little divots right along it. You can get the idea that it's shiny, but I definitely think that in real life, these beetles are so, 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 so shiny that when you color them in black and white, it just takes a little bit away from them because those colors are so striking because that iridescence is so striking. So I feel like no matter what you do, if you put it in black and white, you lose a little bit of that. But again, two hours and I what they're doing. I really like it. You can still see the articulation between the different antennal segments, which is really cool. The highlight on the eyes give it this nice, really cute, adorable look. You can see all of the legs. I feel like this one should have a foot coming off here, but it's close enough. But you can see like the articulation, all the different leg pieces. And yeah, overall it's really good. I just, I think I like Anthony's a little bit better. 
The stuff you put on the back of the beetle shell has a really great look to it. It looks like you could drag your finger over it, feel the texture, how you juxtapose the gray to the black to the gray to the black so that you can see the bending turns is a real feather in your cap. It really does have a three-dimensional look. It looks like it could be actually sitting on her leg. Yeah, and he also did the little drop shadow on it, so it really just like kind of pulls the beetle off the skin, which is really cool. Steve, I really like this tattoo, and I really like how it somehow looks like your style in there. It looks evil. It has a little evil face to it. Um, so the eye, if you look here, the cross hatching is very, very square. As I showed you earlier, all of those eye facets are like round and circular. So I think that is a little bit weird. I it's really cool that he got this antennae. Those are called plumos antennae. Um, so the fly antennae has this big kind of like bulb on it, and then this little like hair that sticks off, and sometimes that hair has a little bit of fluff on it. And the tongue is really cool. I'm glad he added the tongue in there. Flies have sponging mouth parts, and so it's really neat that he pulled that down, and you can really see that. Um, we're losing some detail at the bottom. Of the wing i'm not really sure this looks like it's just like a part of the wing it definitely looks like fly venation if we look at fly venation let's see so when you start doing flies this is what this is what you get to look at all these different types of wing venation uh, and it definitely looks like fly wing venation looks about as good as uh anthony's honeybee wing venation and i like all these little hairs kind of off the butt and off the top but these back legs like i just can't tell what's going on it kind of looks like the fly in whatever reference they used is about to like clean its hind legs this one you can kind of see is like up then back it's just like this back leg is just doing a weird kind of thing like i'm guessing that's what the reference photo looked like but i think when you are translating your reference photo to a piece of art some of those like behavioral things get lost and when you just look at it as a static image as an art piece of art on someone it these kind of like weird little compositional things really stand out but yeah other than that i like it you can definitely tell it looks like a fly i think this is my least favorite of the three getting away from the mantis was the best choice and this thing is every bit of detail this magnified take on this thing is almost ominous i mean it really suits your style but then at the same time every leg every line every little thing on this thing is flawless thanks killer tattoos man this is what we want going forward we want tough decisions guys we need to determine a winner i think outright dj's looks the most like a tattoo it looks like you could pick it up chuck it and the thing will just be solid steve's is more of like a technical drawing it's like a I don't agree with that. That is definitely not what a technical drawing would look like. So you can see in this technical illustration, you can see each of the individual omitidia or like lenses. You can see the exact type of plumos antennae this fly would have. You can see all the little hairs off of the different legs. You can see where all of these individual hairs are coming off of the body that gets back to that thorax map. And you can see these dark pits here where the hair would grow out of so one of the big troubles with people who are identifying flies is sometimes those hairs break off so you go to count hairs you're like oh this this fly only has three hairs so it must be this family but in really in reality it has four pits where the hairs would have grown out of just a couple of your hairs have broken off or something like that so if you're counting the hairs be sure that you're counting the pits where the hairs are coming off of and you can definitely see in the scientific illustration that and you can definitely see just like the straight up very crisp exact wing venation of the fly and you don't have a lot of those kind of like wispy lines at the end which was done in the tattoo to kind of give dimension and shape like you can see here is like uh like those little tiny like cross hatching right here that isn't done in the scientific illustration so that way you can definitely look at the venation and say like this venation matches what i have and you have like little hairs coming off the legs all of this is what this is what makes a technical drawing important and useful for a scientist so the tattoo is amazing and realistic but it is not a scientific illustration a science a, drawing a yeah. science drawing of a blown up fly i'm torn between steve and dj i mean anthony put in multiple textures those translucent wings give that really soft drop shadow plus the connection of every single leg is yes. really well detailed i'm leaning towards anthony anthony's has that beautiful silhouette and it's really soft i'm gonna go with anthony the judges have decided the winner of today's flash challenge is anthony i agree with that
Just from an entomological perspective, I agree with that too. So let me know which one of these was your favorite below in the thought box and with your reasoning why. I'm super curious and really interested in hearing about it. And if you've got any insect tattoos like and you want to show them off, like drop that link in the comments as well. I'd be happy to like just look at them. I love insect art. Well, love bugs, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, be sure to like it so that way I know that you liked it so I continue doing more of these kinds of videos. And don't forget to subscribe as well. If you like these kind of commentary react videos, you can find more of them here in this playlist or you can see last week's video down here with entomologist explains I did a really fun video with my friend Matt about blinking eye spots on caterpillars which is absolutely amazing so be sure to check that out otherwise I will see you next week bye